graffiti has been around in the, all different parts of the world in one form or another, whether it was, you want to consider the cave paintings in Lascaux on down. Um, people, by the time they had walls, they were writing on them. Early in the United States, beginning really in the antebellum years, people began to write on boxcars and that would roll from coast to coast. Um, in the hobo years of the Depression, that became even more prominent. There was always gang graffiti dating back to the 30s and 20s in Los Angeles and other, uh, other parts of California and the Southwest. There was name-based graffiti all over the place. There was Kilroy was here, which actually sprung out of uh, a suburb of Boston, oddly enough, and took, came, became this kind of global icon for the greatest generation. But when this odd combination of name and fame came together, in the late 1960s in both Philadelphia and New York, it really exploded. And what was so magical and so important in the history of American graffiti were the years really 1971 to 1975 in New York. And what happened was a generation of kids, and it's really important to remember that, these were kids. They were almost nobody over the age of 19 involved in this. Developed a whole art form that went from a simple signature just Joe was here kind of thing, all the way up to a mural that covered the entire side of a, of a subway car. And this was something that had just never been seen in our history before, an entire movement just completely developed by kids. Graffiti art. There's no correlation between hip hop and graffiti. One has nothing to do with the other. It was when I was writing, there was no hip hop, there was no... Not even, there was none of that stuff. When we came along, we were listening to Sly and the Family Stone. You know, Vietnam War was going on. This is, we're talking, you know, early 70s. That's when gas was like 50 cents for everything, you know what I mean? And Wild Style is not a lettering, it's a, a way of life, and I invented it. The lettering they're talking about is mechanical lettering, like interlocking letters, which most of the people I hung out with did, so they thought that Wild Style was what well, it was. No, it was just a, the way of life that we live, like wild, with style. I was well, like untamed, but I had class. Wild style, that's how, that's what it means. Right now I'm talking too much shit. Cause the, the, uh, graffiti, graffiti got involved in, 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 uh, in one of the disciplines of hip hop simply because of the flyers. You know, it, 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 and, that, and that, that was where the correlation was. They got, you know, some of the better graffiti artists to actually do the flyers. And that's how graffiti got to be a part of, of hip hop culture. It was through those flyers, and those were the first, you know, first, uh, uh, the first examples of graffiti being a part of hip hop culture. Buddy Esquire, Faze, you know, especially Faze, because he was like a known, you know, he was a a, a well known a, a graph writer. So yeah, when he started doing Faze, it, definitely. right, and he when he started doing it, it took it to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Because it was like adding 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 a legendary uh uh uh, uh graffiti graffiti writer with the up and coming hip hop. And it made it, you know, like some of them flyers are actually masterpieces. You know what I mean? If you look at it for what it is, you know what I mean? For, for what, really for what it, and how it looked and for what it meant, because this was like the beginning of, you know, it's the beginning of a worldwide culture. That's crazy. And a flash got us.